All right, so here we are, week one. I'm going to start by talking a little bit about the assignment that you will be doing this week. It's a two-part assignment. And uh, the first part of the assignment is, well, actually, let's talk about uh, discussion. I believe the discussion, unless it's changed, will be um, wor working with the video library. Uh, so if you take a look at this, you're going to look at the video library, what videos are in there for you, and uh, watch the videos. And then what you're going to do is you're going to address the following questions that are given to you. There's three of them. What are the top three things you learned from the videos? How do you plan on using what you've learned in this week's assignment? And where in the professional world of design do you see the skills you've learned in this week being applied? We will be learning a number of different things about color. This week we will pretty much focus on color, but in the next following weeks we will be dealing with color in production for print primarily. So this discussion is a chance uh, for a dynamic discussion. So what you need to do is not just go in and put your initial thoughts into this, but include questioning in your discussion. Uh, you could include questioning in your main topic to invite uh, debate among the students and also when you reply to students. Try to get questioning involved so that maybe what you could do is get some cross contact going. So that's primarily what I'm looking for uh, you to do. One other thing I'd like to mention to you, I've placed rubrics in the announcements. So I would very much like you to go into the announcements, take a look at my announcements, but find the one that has the rubrics. Open the rubrics up and, and read them and see what I'm put what I've put in there for you so that you can understand what I expect you to do each week in your discussions and your assignment and your assessments. Okay? So that's that part. The next part primarily is the assignment this week, it's a two-part assignment. The first part is the color wheel. What I am going to do tonight is I'm going to demonstrate the use of Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, to create this color wheel. I know it says right here that you can use any Adobe Creative Suite program to build your color, color wheel. I would very much like to ask you to do this in Adobe Illustrator. My personal opinion is that Illustrator is the perfect program for you to do this week's assignment, both parts in. So I am going to demonstrate a number of things that I think will help you and also help me when you create your color wheel and your color exploration. So I'm going to just quickly talk a little bit about part one. I'm going to demonstrate it to you in a few minutes. And then part two I also will uh, talk about and demonstrate tonight. You're going to create the color wheel using 12 colors. You're going to visually represent the following color relationships with lines or and or triangles. You're going to show me primary colors. You're going to show me secondary colors. You're going to show me tertiary colors. And you're going to show me complementary colors. The colors will need to be labeled. You can use the color names or you can use clear geometric shapes to link the colors. What I want you to do is I want you to try to make this as simple as possible. Can you be creative with it? Yes. But when you go in there, there's a number of complementary colors. You don't need to show me all the complementary colors. If you showed me one pair of complementary colors and said to me, these two are complementary colors, and if you do it right, I will know that you know what you're talking about. So it's the same thing with the others. You don't have to show me all secondary colors. You don't have to show me all tertiary colors. Just show me that you know what a tertiary color arrangement is by showing me one correct one. And the complementary, it's the same thing. You don't need to show me every single complement, complementary color uh, scheme that's in the wheel. Just show me one and show it to me correct. That's what's most important is that I know that you know how to do this. Um, as I say, I'm going to go in shortly and I'm going to demonstrate Illustrator and how I created mine 
and talk a little bit about how I did it. I'm also going to show you a couple of things about Illustrator from a from a product. Remember now, this course is really called color and production. So whenever possible, one of the things that I want to do is I want to be talking to you about things that have to do with production as well as color. So I'm going to be talking to you a little bit along the way about things that you should know how to do in a program, in this particular case, Adobe Illustrator. So it says you can use any Adobe Creative Suite program to build your color wheel. Please use Illustrator, okay? In here, you can see some examples of the quality of the work for this assignment. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, open these up and show them to you because I'm going to demonstrate how I did mine. You can look at these examples, and it's totally up to you to decide exactly how you're going to do it. Part two of this, I'm going to also show you how I did one, was to do a color exploration. Once again, it says use any Adobe Creative Suite program. Please try to use Adobe Illustrator on this. Just because from the type of work that you're doing here, it is the correct program to use. And one of the things that I want to impress upon you through the, this course is that as graphic designers, it becomes very important for you to understand what are the right programs to use and when you should be using them. So in this particular case, I promise you, this is the best program to use to do what we're going to be doing tonight. The final size they're asking for should be 8 inch by 8 inch, one page, one page for each color scheme. Uh, so that means essentially you're going to end up with four pages. What I'm going to, one of the things I'm going to show you tonight is how to create individual artboards in a, a single file. So ultimately what I would like you to do if possible is, and, and you should be able to do this because I'll demonstrate how to do it, is to create four separate artboards in your single file and put your art uh, on each one of these little artboards and submit it to me this way. This way you'll only send me one file and it'll have four, one PDF file and it'll have four different artboards showing and then you don't have to be sending me, oh, I don't know, like maybe half a dozen or more uh, separate PDF files that I have to open. So again, from a production standpoint, my goal here is to show you some things that I think will help you to learn how to look good as a graphic designer. That's really my job. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be working on an analogous color, color scheme. Analogous, analogous color scheme I will demonstrate to you. Tertiary, it's the same thing and complementary. So what you're going to do is you're going to create some sort of a color exploration based on a design that you create. I'm going to show you one that I came up with. I'm not saying you have to do or think like I do. I want you to use your own creativity on this. But at the same time, I would like to see you come up with something that that is uh, graphically interesting. And, and of course, you have to use the correct color relationship in your uh, presentation to me. The finished pages should look similar to the ones below. Use a 6.5 by 7 tall rectangle to contain your design. Now, I'm going to tell you flat out, if you don't use 8 by 8 or 6.5 by 7, if you use something slightly different than that, I'm not going to be upset. The, the bottom line is I want you to do this project right. I think if you take a look at my demonstrations tonight, you'll see that I wasn't really using um, 8 by 8 or 6.5 by 7. Mine are slightly different than that. So to me, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing really is do you comprehend what the examples are telling you to do your, your exercises are, do you understand that and are you doing it and are you paying attention to the little things that I am showing you because I'm, I'm going to look to see those things. This is a course on, again, production and the things that I'm going to show you will make you look good when you actually get into producing stuff for people. So that's why I will be demonstrating them, okay? All right, and you're going to use the same design for all the three color schemes. The colors will change. I'll show you how to do this. I'll get into it and uh, submit your work as PDF files. So that's what you're ultimately going to do for me is submit them to me in PDF form. I will make sure that before the night's over, I will demonstrate how to create a PDF for anybody that might not know how to do that. So I've got kind of a full night ahead of me. 
And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this down. Oh, by the way, the assessment is a quiz. So you read the article on color found in reading lecture notes first, and then you can go in and you can take your quiz. If you want, you can keep that article open and go in and take your quiz, sort of like an open book quiz. Um, and I have no problem with you doing that. The bottom line is you get really one shot at this. So make sure that you are careful and you are prepared when you go in to take this assessment. Okay? Uh, so that's that. I'll drop this down. Now I'm going to go into Adobe Illustrator. And here we go. Come on. Here we go. Adobe Illustrator. Here we are. All right. So now uh, this uh, is the color wheel. And let me explain right off the bat that I got this color wheel essentially online. You can go online and you can find color wheels uh, all day long. There's, there's literally probably thousands of them there. They all generally look the same. There's 12 colors and they're generally these colors. Uh, I, I basically built this thing and... I'm going to show you how I built this using this program. I'm going to show you the panels and the the, uh, the panels and the the tools that I use to create this and the the techniques that I use to create this. But there's a couple of things that I want to do before I begin. The first thing that I want to do is I spoke to you. Let me go over and show you my. Um, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually open up a file, a new file. Uh, the reason I'm going to open this file up is because a minute ago I was talking to you about artboards. And there's my artboards panel. I'm going to bring my artboards panel out. Okay. Now, just so that you know, in Adobe Illustrator, you can get all your panels up here in window. Okay. And if you take a look, there's a number of panels that have check marks next to them. There's one, the control panel. That's that panel that runs across the top there. The tools panel, that's that panel over there. The artboards, that's that panel right there. The layers is right there, and the swatches are right there, okay? So this is showing you the panels that are currently open. These panels are the panels that I will probably most be using tonight, uh, or at least I will be focusing on these panels uh, right now, so that's why I have them open. First thing I want to do is I want to show you that in this document, the color wheel right here, and there's the art that's on it, there is only one artboard, okay? In the artboard panel, you can see it says one, and it's called artboard one. So this is one artboard, and this is kind of what you get when you open up a document without indicating multiple artboards. But if you remember our assignment here, okay, the first part of our assignment requires us to do three, or actually four, because you're gonna create the color wheel, there's your color wheel, and then you're gonna create a representation of an analogous color screen, uh, color, color uh, scheme, a tertiary color scheme, and complementary. So really, if you think about it, you're going to want to create four artboards here, okay, in order to do this in one file. And I definitely want you to do this because I want you to learn something about the program. That's the point of this. I've had a number of people saying to me, why are you changing the conditions of the, of the course um, in requirements for your uh, projects because I'm a teacher and I'm trying to teach you things and there's some of you that might know this but there are some of you who don't know this so I mean what good am I going to do coming in here to talk to you if I don't try to teach you something so that's really what's going on here all right so I'm going to go up to file and I'm going to go new and I get my new dialog box it's taking a minute there it is Okay, so the name of this is going to be uh, Untitled. And you know what? Because this isn't going to be something that I'm going to keep. I'm just going to leave it as Untitled. Uh, the profile can be print in this case. Uh, so you, you, We'll talk more about this and this later on when we're doing something a little bit more precise. But right now, this is just a quick demonstration of how to create multiple artboards. Okay? So right here, see where it says number of artboards? Well, what I would do now is I would click on this and go two, oop, wrong one, two, three, four. So now I have indicated that I want four artboards. Now, if you look over here, you got a series of these little buttons. These little buttons show you how 
the artboards are going to be arranged on your in your document. And this one is one on the left, one on the right, and then down to the left, and then over to the right. So four, it's going to go left, right, down, and then right again. Um, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set up the spacing to be uh, let's go to let's say point five i n. That's a half of an inch, and the size of the document. I'm going to make it, I think they said it was going to be, I'm going to change the units here, the inches, and I think they wanted it to be 8 by 8 on the first one. So I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to set that to be 8 by 8. Okay, now we don't need bleed, and we don't need any advanced settings. So the important thing for you to understand is I'm leaving this set to untitled. The profile changes to custom because I've changed the size on this. The important things are that I've changed the number of artboards from one to four, and I've given it a spacing of a half of an inch between my boards, and I've set the size to eight by eight. So I hope you all understand that, uh, and I'm gonna hit okay. And there's my document, and take a look. There are my four artboards, see them? And if you take a look at the artboard panel, instead of having one for the color wheel, this one has four. So that's all there is to this. It's, it's really simple. All you have to do is specify, instead of one artboard, the number of artboards that you want and, and the way you want them arranged and the spacing you want between them. Very simple to do this. Now you can build your color wheel and you can do your color wheel variation here and the second variation, third variation. You can do them all on one board. And then when you go file save, or I think it's actually file export, uh, I, I either export or save as, and you can then save it as a PDF and send it to me, I'll end up with one document that has all four of these panels with separate art on it. And it'll be one document that you have to send to me. Really, really simple. Later on tonight, when I get to my hex symbol, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. There are multiple uh, artboards on that file and I'm going to play with it and I'm going to export that to a PDF and I'm going to show you what it looks like. So you will see before the night is over exactly what I'm talking about. That's the first thing that I wanted to show you and that's under artboards and I'm going to just minimize that for a second. Now I want to show you the second thing. The second thing with this program is if you take a look in here you're looking at the default. This is what's known as the default swatch panel. If you look at my color uh, color wheel, you'll see that my default swatch panel is also here, and my uh, color wheel art, it's also here, okay? So what this basically is, a series of colors that have been created specifically for you when you open this up. The problem with these colors, it doesn't mean a darn thing to what you're doing. None of these colors really relate to your project whatsoever. Okay, so from a production standpoint, what I generally like to do is I like to remove all these colors. Now, you notice that I've jumped off of the untitled and I've jumped back into the color wheel. Okay, because in the color wheel, I specifically left these in here so I could actually demonstrate this, what I'm going to do, which is to remove all these colors. And then I'm going to place all of the colors that I'm going to use for my color wheel in here to show you the proper way that you should set up a, a color uh, swatch panel. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, there's a swatch menu. I click on the swatch menu and I'm gonna drop down to where it says select all unused. See it right there. Notice that you get this little white line around everything, okay? I'm gonna come to the garbage can and I'm gonna delete the swatches and it'll ask me, do I want to delete them? And I'm going to say, yep, I do. Boom. And now they're all gone. Uh, this doesn't go away. I can click on that, hit delete, and it goes away. All right. I am left with none, registration, white, and black. Generally speaking, these colors will remain. They will not go away. And I want them colors. Those colors are okay to be in there. So now what I want to do is 
I want to load the colors. Now you gotta understand, I built this already. So all these colors came from me bringing in a piece of artwork from the web and using my eyedropper tool to sample them to get the colors. That red color came from the pot, the red that came in uh, in my um, my uh, color wheel that I brought in from the web. Same with the orange, red, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, yellow, green, and so on. So these colors are all colors that I literally grabbed from an example that somebody else did. All right. Uh, so really, they're pretty accurate. Uh, they're accurate enough for our purposes. So what I want to do is I want to show you how to take your swatches panel, and I want to show you how you load your colors into the swatches panel. So right now, if you take a look over here, I have my red color, which I selected. And notice that the colors that are being used on that red, there it is. There's the red for the fill, and that's the fill right there. And notice that there's a gray, too. So basically, what I did was I put a gray stroke around all these little shapes. So I have to in anticipate that gray as well. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that red swatch, and I'm going to hold and drag it right over and let it go inside of my color swatch. So now I've loaded the color red into my swatch library. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come over and click on red orange and click hold, hold the mouse down and drag it and drop it into my swatches panel. I'm going to do the same thing with each one of these colors. I'm essentially loading all the colors that I created into my swatches panel. Click and drag and drop. Click and drag and drop. And just work around until I get all of my colors loaded in here. It'll take a minute to do this. And then the blue, and then the blue violet, and the violet, and the red violet. All right, so now I have all of my colors that I'm using. The only one that I don't have is I don't have my gray. So I'm going to bring the this, this stroke forward. The gray is now in the forward position. I'm going to click on it, drag and drop, and now I've loaded the gray in. So this palette has every color that I am using for my project in here. This is what makes sense from a production standpoint, not this. These colors are meaningless to you. These are just colors that are, and it, look, I'm going to show you. File, new, and I'm just going to hit OK. And I get a new document. This is what this is. See, it's an untitled too. That's a new document. The swatch panel looks exactly the same. So it's really important for you to understand that. Basically, I'm going to get rid of these right now because I don't need them anymore. The bottom line is, and, and if you look at my color wheel too, once again, you see what happens here? My colors are all back here because ultimately I didn't do it in this particular piece of art. Okay? So I'm just trying to point this out to you that this is what's going on here. I've literally gone in and I've removed these things and I'll go into my uh, two color wheel and I'll show you basically the same thing applies here. You click on this and you come down, select all unused and you hit the garbage can and you delete all of them. You'll probably get the same thing happening with that little uh, folder and you'll delete that as well. And then you're going to go through the process of dragging and dropping your colors in exactly as you did in the other one, okay? All right, and by the way, just so that you know, I wanted you to take a look at this. These here are all the colors, and what I did was I, I used hexadecimal numbers for this. So what is a hexadecimal number? I'm gonna double click on this and I bring up my color picker. I actually double clicked on the, on the uh, fill. Let me cancel this and go back. Double click on the fill, and you get the color picker. And if you look right down here, you have F7931D. And I guess that's like the third one, F7931D. There you go. Okay? So you see what that is? That's a hexadecimal number. There is CMYK color. There is RGB color. And there is HSB. I'm not going to get into this any deeper than this right now because we're going to get into this next week 
and the following week. But for now, I just wanted to quickly show you a little bit because it was here. I'm going to hit cancel. Uh, and I'm, I'm now going to show you, I'm now going to show you how, um, excuse me, I had to get that phone. All right. I, I'm now going to show you the next step, which is to create what it takes to create the, um, what it takes to create the um, the wheel, the color wheel. So I'm going to go to my second, going to come over here to my second uh, artboard, and I'll drag this over a little bit, and I'm going to take this as my my path object, and basically all this thing is this is nothing more than uh, a basic shape, which is the ellipse tool. And I come over and I click and I hold down the shift key. So I'm clicking on the board, holding the shift key down, and I'm going to drag out a circular shape just like that. And that's it. That's all there is to this. It's really simple. And as a matter of fact, I'll delete this one and I'll use the one that I just made. So I start off and, and I'm showing you how to make the one that I did over here. You could try something else if you want but remember this is a color wheel so ultimately this thing should look and feel like a color wheel you should get that from it all right so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to show you how to make this into a donut first a donut essentially means I'm gonna cut a hole in the middle uh, so that this thing looks like that kind of a wheel so I'm gonna go up to the edit menu and I'm gonna go copy and what I did or edit paste in place all right, so what I did was I copied the shape and I play, paste, pasted it in front of itself. See, so now there's two of them. Control Z to bring it back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to this corner, or I can go to any corner, but I'm going to go to that corner. I have my mouse. I'm holding my mouse down. I'm going to hold the Shift key and the Alt key. I am on a PC, so I'm going to be using the Shift and the Alt. Yours would be... Uh, shift and I believe uh, what alt is uh, option I think uh, and I'm going to drag this circular shape on top I'm going to drag it down to oh I don't know like about there and then I let go so now you see what I got is I have this um, this circle in the front and I have this circle in the back and both of them just have a stroke on it there's no fill on it look over here See, so you got a stroke and you have no fill. So to make this thing uh, a donut, a hole, I select both of them. And I could do this a number of ways. One way I could do it is to go up to the window menu and open up Pathfinder and bring the Pathfinder panel over here. And the Pathfinder panel lets me unite the two objects, which I don't want to do because it kind of will erase that center circle and just make it a solid big circle, which isn't right. Or I can use the minus front, which means that the object in front or the object on top is going to literally cut itself out of the object in the back. Well, that sounds like what I want to do. So I'm going to click on that one and notice that in the center, that line, that little dot went away. All right, and I'm going to go control Z to undo that. You see it? Look at when I select this, do you see that little dot in the middle there? When I click on minus front, see how it goes away? It goes away because that, that is now a hole. That is not a shape. The shape is in here. So if I throw a color into this, watch when I throw a color into it, you'll see it turns into a donut. Look at that. Isn't that super? So there you go. Now I've basically created that shape. The only thing that I have to do is I have to divide that shape. See it? And if I select it, there it is. It's not. It's one object. See? If I click on this thing, it's one object. So what I need to do now is I'm going to go to the window. Let's go to the view. Let's go to bounding box. Where are you at? Bounding box. I can never find this. Um, hide, uh, hide bounding box. Ooh, there we go. Okay. So... Uh, you'll see that I still have some anchor points that are showing here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some line segments that I'm going to use to divide this thing up. Before I do that though, to make this a little bit easier and also to make it so that I can get some guides if I want to, is uh, I'm going to come up into the view menu and I'm going to go to uh, rulers, show rulers, and my rulers now appear along the top and along the side. And if I click on the ruler with my mouse and hold the mouse down, click and hold and drag, I'm dragging a guide out. And if I bring the guide out and I lay that guide over top of, see the little anchor points on the circles? You see how I'm sitting it? Or let me let go and you'll see. I select this. See the little anchor points there? Notice that I've laid that guide right on top of those anchor points. Okay? I can do the same thing here. I can click, hold, and drag a guide out, and I can lay them on those anchor points right there. Notice that I now have a center point back, okay, an intersection point. So that's going to help me. So what I want to do is I want to start dividing this thing up. To do that, I'm going to choose the line segment tool. What this tool does essentially is it'll create line segments for me. And I create straight line segments by holding down the shift key. Notice that I'm outside the shape. I've made my, and I'm also exactly on that line. So I'm outside the shape on the line, I'm holding the shift key down, and I'm going to drag straight down until I go outside the shape at the bottom, and I've created a line segment. But there's no, well, actually the color is on it. Yeah, you can actually see the color is on this thing. So let's see if we can see this. Uh, no, you're not seeing it. Why am I not getting that color? Uh, color is black. Let's try three. There we go. Okay, let's bring it back to one. Yeah, I'm not seeing it with one. Huh, two. You can see it with two. Okay, two's fine. So basically now, I'm going to go to the view menu. I'm going to go guides, and I'm going to hide guides. Okay, so you see what I got? I have my donut shape, and now I have this line segment. So what I want to do now is I want to create a another line segment and I want to divide this thing into quarters. That's the next thing I'm going to do. So I click on the shape. And then what I'm going to do is, see more, my lines have to, my line has to go right to there. So I'm going to first go view, guides, show guides, bring the guides back. I'm going to select my shape and I'm going to go edit copy, edit, paste in place. So I've copied and pasted the line in front of itself. I'm going to grab the rotate tool, and I'm going to make sure that my point in the middle, I'll, I'm going to zoom in to show you this, right here in the middle, watch when I click on the rotate tool. You see that little bomb sight there or gun sight? I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to make sure it's sitting exactly in the middle, right about there, okay? View, fit artboard and window. And now I'm going to come in here, I'm going to hold down this anchor point, and I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to actually drag this thing. I didn't hold the line. I, I, I clicked on the line. Hold down the shift key and drag it to the, the guide line and I'll let go. And now if you take a look, I have go to the view menu and the guides, hide guides. I now have, I have these four lines. All right, actually, I got these four segments. I got two lines and I got four segments. So what you're basically doing with this is you are uh, creating lines that are going to, in the end, help you divide your object up. So this center section here is, is barren. There's nothing in it. So you see if I try to select it, I'm holding the mouse down and dragging. I can't select anything in there because I have to be here to select it. See? Control Z. All right, but in here, I can't select anything. But what I can do is I can select both of these lines by clicking and dragging over top of both of those lines. So now I've selected both of those lines. And I'm going to go edit copy, edit paste in place, and I'm going to click on my rotate tool again, making sure that it is dead in the center right there. And I'm going to grab the segment and I'm going to start rotating until I get a piece that is approximately, now 
this is, you don't have to worry about this being dead on 100%. Do the best you can to make this thing uh, as accurate as possible. But I'm taking the copy now and I'm dragging it in a circular way until I reach a point which I want to divide it at. And there I have my, uh, my second set of, of sec sections done. Again, I'm going to go edit, paste in place because I copied it. And I'm going to make sure that my center point is dead in the middle. And again, I'm going to grab that and drag it around until I get these sections to be about the same. And they all look pretty good at this point. I'd say they're close enough for our purposes here. Okay, now take a look. What I basically have is an orange donut, and I have all these lines which will give me the shapes that I need to create my, my wheel. Now all I have to do is divide all these up because they're not all divided up. Now how I do that is I use a marquee selection. I click and drag to select everything. I, I've got the circle selected and I have all my line segments selected. Everything right now is selected. I'm going to go back to my Pathfinder palette. This down here on the bottom row is my divide uh, button. When I click on divide, what it's going to do is it's going to divide everything into bits. It's going to literally chop it all up into pieces. Watch when, it, when I do it. Boom. So what happened is, each one of these things, it's grouped. I'm going to go object, ungroup, okay? And each one of these sections now is an individual section. Now, there's also this stuff in the middle here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that stuff in the middle, and I'm going to hit delete to get rid of it. It's gone. What I'm left with, in, and these out here, just so that you know, these out, outer lines, they disappear on their own. You don't have to worry about them. They just go away. But in the middle, because there's a circular shape in here, it's going to want to kind of give you that inside shape thinking that's what you want. And you don't. You want to get rid of it. So this is my, uh, my, my uh, color wheel divided up. The only thing I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to have to put my colors into it. So here's what I'm going to do to show you how to do this real quickly. Normally what I would do would be to click on my color and click on one of my chips and put my fill in. Remember, you have a fill and a stroke, and you want to make sure that your fill is forward when you do this. Okay, so the second one is going to be that color. The third one is going to be that color. Now, I didn't load all my colors into here, so I would have normally have done that. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you another way to get these colors in, and I'm going to steal the colors off of this wheel right here. And this will also give you a, an inkling of how you could, uh, when you bring in a bitmap of the color wheel, how you can grab these colors on it. All right. So now I've got the first three done. There they are. I'm going to go to the fourth one. I'm going to select it. And the fourth one here would be that color right there. I'm going to get the eyedropper tool and I'm going to come over to the fourth one right there. And I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to come over, use the regular selection tool. And I'm going to select the next one and get my eyedropper tool. And if you want, you could make this a little easier by bringing the eyedropper tool out. And now I'm going to come over to the yellow. And then I'm going to get my selection tool. And I'm going to click on the next one. Then I'm going to get my eyedropper tool. And I'm going to come over and click on the green. And then I'm going to get my selection tool. Come over here, click on the next little section, eyedropper tool. And that one is the uh, darker green. And once again, get the selection tool to select my next shape. Eyedropper tool. And this is the light blue. And keep going with this process. And hold on. I didn't. Oh, this one. What is. Oh, I, you know what? I don't have to select that. I just go in and click on the color. What am I doing? I actually, I forgot to, sel I forgot to select. That's what I did. I meant to select this, not this. I select, select the next shape, click the eyedropper tool, come in here, and then click on that. There you go. That's what I should be doing. Uh, and then you just keep going. You just keep going uh, to the next one until you're done. And I'm almost done. I'll be done in like three more clicks. And click on the next one, or two actually, I believe. Yep. And then click on this and the purple. And then my last one right there. 
and boom, there you go. And right there is our, our color wheel. All right? So this is the first part of your exercise. You're going to create a color wheel just like this. Um, I hope you understand uh, what I just did. If you have any questions or anything that you need to discuss with me, you know, to give me a call or send me an email, I'll be more than happy to uh, discuss it with you. But you should be able to pull this off. Now, notice here where I have complementary. You, uh, you can see that um, my, uh, my complementary, I've created this little graphic here. And the graphic basically is, um, for me, I just created a couple of little triangles and a little line segment, and I made them the same gray. Oh, and by the way, just so that you know, uh, this is one thing I will do. Watch this. I want to show you that the gray, the gray needs to be loaded in here. And what you want to do is you want to select this, and you want to click on the stroke, and you want to make the stroke on all this gray. So that's actually what your piece is going to look like in the end. It's going to have that nice little gray. I mean, that's the way mine looks. You, did you, do you have to do it this way? No, you could do it a little different if you want. But now I've shown you basically the whole process of creating that particular color wheel. What I did primarily was I created this little graphic in here in gray because that's the color scheme that I'm working with. And I did that by creating a square uh, very easily. I came in here and grabbed this and I get the rectangle tool, and I come and I click and I hold and I drag out a rectangular shape, okay, sort of like that, and I make it gray, sort of like that. And the thing that's really cool here is if you get your pen tools, there's your pen tools, and just so that you know what I did, each of these tools, not all of them, but many of these tools have this little corner down here, that little uh, white, uh, triangular shape at the corner that means that there are other tools nested in there if you click on this you'll see that the panel comes up and if you go all the way over to the right there's a little panel there that you see that little tab that little tab highlights and if I let go it pops out the panel which I can then bring over here I'm going to close this because I'm done with this for now um, but I'm showing you this because now I have my um, tools out here and I'm going for the tool called the delete anchor point tool because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make a triangular shape. And one quick way to make a triangular shape is to just grab your uh, rectangle tool and make a square. And then come over with the uh, delete anchor point tool. What this do does essentially is it deletes anchor points. So I'm just going to come over here, click on that, and look at that. Right away, I got a triangle. And all I need to do is to get this thing looking even better is to actually I got to deselect it first and then select it again. Make sure I get all those points selected and I get the rotate tool and I can rotate that thing around. And if I hold down the shift key, I can rotate it so that it's straight. Now, if I want to change the appearance, notice how I've made it longer. All I have to do is come in and get the direct selection tool. Okay. Here next to the regular selection tool, we have the direct selection tool and you have the group selection tool. The group selection tool, when you have a group set of objects, you can go in with the group selection tool and click on and select one of the objects. The direct selection tool allows you to click on and select individual points. And you see what it looks like? That one is filled in and those are empty. That is a selected point. These are not selected. Hi, uh, Jeff. How are you? Doing good, thanks. Okay, do me a favor. Um, I'm more than willing to let you have your speaker on. Just make sure that nobody talks in your background and uh, you don't have any radios or any kind of uh, noise because it'll all be picked up. Matter of fact, I encourage my students to use their mic instead of sending me messages. OK, you're going to have to come in and you're going to have to watch the recorded session because, frankly, uh, I'm well into the beginning of it already. OK. You all right. Okay. Yeah, all, right. No all right. So basically, I'm now going to use the up arrow with this point selected. I'm going to use the up arrow and what's going on here? There we go. I'm going to bring the up arrow up until I get something 
that kind of looks like my arrowhead right there. Now, is it exactly the same? No, it's close enough. Okay, you get the point. And then what I'm going to do to make this arrow look like this, and this is complimentary, by the way, and I'm also going to show you another really cool trick in a minute. All right, so this guy here is selected, and I'm going to go edit copy, edit paste in front, and just so that you know, there are other ways that I could do this, but I'm doing this in what I believe is the most basic and easy way, because some of you people are, are not going to be very knowledgeable in Adobe Illustrator, and I, I am doing everything I can to try to make this easy for you. Jeff, since you're here, do you know Adobe Illustrator at all? Uh, yeah, um, I had your class for um, Design 103. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, I thought the name was familiar. But uh, did we use? Did we really do Illustrator in there? It was all Illustrator. Oh, all right. So uh, what I'm showing so far, I know you only saw a tiny little bit. What I what I've shown you so far rings a bell. Uh, no, actually, I just I just came in right now. Right when when I came in, so all right. Um, so you don't know enough that you okay. All right, so um, I copied, edit, copy, right? Did I do that already? Now that I'm talking to Jeff here. Uh, yeah, I did, Control-Z. All right, so edit, paste in front. Now, what I want to do is I want to make the other end of that arrow, okay? And again, this is just, I'm just showing you how I made a way of calling out my uh, color relationships, okay? You can maybe come up with another way of doing it. I, I totally don't care. I'm just showing you one way to do it, okay? So edit, copy, edit, paste in front. Instead of the rotate tool, I'm going to come in and get the reflect tool. And actually, I'm going to click, uh, double, I'm sorry, double click on the reflect tool. And I'm going to bring up the reflect dialog box. And I'm going to hit preview. And I want to reflect it vertically. Okay? Or I'm sorry, horizontally. Horizontally. Okay, so you see how that looks now? This looks like an arrow pointing up, and this one looks like an arrow pointing down. And I'm going to hit OK. I'm not going to bother copying it. I'm just going to hit OK. And now what I'm going to do is hold down the Shift key, and I'm going to down arrow this. Holding down the Shift key when you move it down arrow moves the, uh, the uh, piece further along. And what I've done basically is I've created that and that part of my, um, my uh, arrow. I'm going to get the line tool, and I'm going to come over here. And notice I'm getting these little – see the little green lines? I got these little green lines which are helping me to align this. If I go to the view menu, uh, I have what are known as smart guides and snap to point. Smart guides and snap to point both are tools that help me to place things well. All right. So again, with the line tool, hit cancel. I'm going to come in here, click and hold to create a straight line. And then I'm going to make sure that that straight line has the gray color on it. And then I'm going to bring that up. To, I don't know, like, let's see, seven's too big. I'm going to bring it back to seven, six, six, five, four, three, and that's probably pretty good. Now, the last thing that I want to do here is I'm going to select all three of these objects, and I'm using a marquee to do that. Okay, marquee is essentially when you click somewhere off the objects and you drag and you select all three of your objects. That's called marqueeing. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Align Palette. Right next to the Pathfinder Palette in here, I have the Align Palette. And when I click on the Align Palette, I can align these objects a number of different ways. Uh, watch what happens when I hit Horizontal Align Left. It throws that over and it lines it to the left, which does me no good whatsoever. I'm going to undo that. But the one next to it, the Horizontal Align Center, if I click on it, it will align all three of them center. Now, you probably didn't see this move very much because I more or less had it in place. But let me move this over a little bit and let me select all three and then hit horizontal align center again. And you see now that it moves and it creates an, a perfect alignment of those three objects. And I have something that looks pretty much like this uh, arrowhead right there. What I would then do is go in and I'd select all three of them and I'd go object group. And now they're grouped together. If I select one object, I select the other. If I move them around, see, they all move in, in the same relationship to where they are. And I can do it any amount of time that I want. And I won't mess them up. All right? Now, there's one very small detail here. You see the word complementary. 
when you guys get ready to send me your file, the word complimentary is live text. Jeff, do you know uh, uh, what live text really means when I say live text? Uh, yeah, that means that you can um, edit it. Yeah. Uh, well, edit it. I can edit it as text. There's a line underneath it, and if I went in there, I could change the word to read something else, or I could go up and I could change the font. Like, for instance, uh, that drop down. Come on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's see if I can do this without hitting that drop down. Um, what was I trying to do? I was going to try to click on that and go to uh, change it from impact. To another font that's what I wanted to do uh, I'm gonna just I don't know what any of these are joker oh, juice there you go okay so you see how I just changed that font I'm gonna undo it but you get the idea this is live font uh, now the problem with fonts being live like this and I believe that I sent you guys links to a, a, um, a video a YouTube video that essentially uh, shows you how to deal with this but what I want you to do is when, when you guys get ready to send something to me, uh, I want you to make sure that you uh, turn this object or turn this text, this live text, into objects. The reason I want you to do this is because your computers and my computers probably don't have all the same text on them. And unfortunately, if you send me something that's live text and I don't have that on my computer, my computer will change the text and it will change the way your project looks. So there's a really easy way to fix that. All you do is you go up to the type menu and you go create outlines. And you see now what happens is the text becomes objects. This is no longer text. So if I send this to you or if you send it to me and I don't have the fonts, it doesn't matter because this is no longer fonts. Jeff, did I talk to you about that in the last class yeah um, when I did my CD cover um, I had you create outlines yes okay so you understand what I'm saying and did I explain that well enough do you think that uh, comes across oh yeah it's perfect good all right so now basically let's go view fit artboard and window I'm gonna show you one more really one more really cool trick actually let me zoom in a little bit on this all right, let's go in here and zoom in on this. This is something that I really like and I think you're going to like. So now I've got this thing selected and uh, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click on those two and I'm going to go object lock selection. When I lock a selection, I make it so that you can't really select these no matter what you do. Okay. The reason I'm doing this is because if you take a look at my little demonstration here, I am showing you what a complementary color scheme is. Complementary color scheme is any two colors that oppose each other on the color wheel. So if I, uh, Jeff, you can answer this. If I touch that blue and go to that orange, would that be complementary? Uh, yes. Okay. Now, ready for this? If I do this, and that, would that be complementary? No. Good. So you get it. Complementary are opposites of one another on the color wheel. So what I want to do is I want to show this relationship uh, maybe even a little bit more dynamically than just showing it with an arrow. So, and again, part of the whole thing here is I want to give you some feeling for, I'm going to close a few of these because I don't need them. Oh, I do need this one though and uh, move this over here. Um, I wanna show you some of the great features of this program. What I would like you to do is by the end of this mod, I would like you to feel inspired to go on and study more about Illustrator. Illustrator is a terrific program. Jeff, right? You, what do you think of it now? Any different than when you had the la had last class with it? Oh yeah, it's my favorite. Yeah, so it's a really good program that you have to get to know, uh, and my goal here is to try to get you to know it, because I'm surprised at the number, I'm always surprised at the number of people who kind of shy away from this program, and there's nothing to shy away from. It's, once you get rolling with it, it's really easy, it's a lot of fun, and you can do a tremendous amount of really great things with it. So what I would like to be able to do with this is I would like to show this representation of the complementary color scheme even a little better. There is something that I can use to do that. I'm going to go to the window menu and I'm going to come down and I'm going to find the transparency palette. 
And where is it? It's right there. Okay, so the transparency palette. So what transparency is, I can do it two ways. I can use blend modes, which I'm not going to be using for this because blend modes usually require you to have a number of objects, one on top of another, that you can blend them into. Or you can use the opacity slider. So if I click on that, there are my opacities. And I can also click on this and I can put in a number. Now, Jeff, let me ask you a question. Can you tell me from your memory, can you tell me what opacity is? Um, I guess how, um, how, how much of the um, image you're seeing? Yes, yeah, so in other words, you would have a percentage of the color showing, the rest of it will be basically hidden. Okay, so if it's going to be 50%, you're actually only seeing 50% of the actual color. The other 50% is gone. It's transparent. Does that make sense? Yes, yes it does. Okay, so here's what I want to do. Um, I want to find a way to show these two colors, and I'm going to use transparency to do it. Now, this object is, uh, oh, it's, it's not grouped. Okay, so this isn't grouped. But this is locked in the middle, so I can't really select them. So what I want to do is I don't want to mess with that color, the red and the green. But what I want to do is I want to do something with these colors right here to try to make these colors look a little bit different. Now, I, I notice that when I do this, for some reason, it looks like all these colors are selecting. So I must have set something in this that I didn't undo. So let me go to the object menu and go ungroup. Okay, let me try this again. So I'm going to select this, and there you go. So you see how I've only selected this side over here? I wanted to do both of these, and I wanted to do them separate. So now I've got these selected. This isn't, and this isn't. I'm going to come over to the opacity slider, and I'm going to set this down to 50%. And look at that. And then I'm going to come over here and grab on these, and I'm going to come and make them 50%. And now if you go zoom out, what I have basically is I have my color relationship that's showing. So this shows you exactly what a complementary color relationship is in regards to the use of a color wheel. So it's a combination of text, a graphic that points, and doing something with the actual wheel to create that, that combination of uh, complementary colors displaying so that you understand uh, what complement or what um, color relationship you're working with. So what do you think, Jeff? Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to go in and read the assignment and you're going to create something very similar to this using my uh, methods that I just showed in so far in our little demonstration. Okay. And you're going to create uh, let's see if I can open it back up again real quick and we can just retouch where we were before with this. So we're going to be doing primary, secondary, tertiary, and complementary. So basically that's what you're going to be doing. All right? You're going to find out what a complementary color is. And just so that you know, complementary color is that right there. And secondary colors, you're going to go in and you're going to determine what a secondary color is, primary colors, and tertiary colors. The reading that you will do this week will show you what they are and will tell you what they are. And then you can literally go in and build something that displays all four of them. So you'll end up making four wheels. One wheel will be your color and the other will be the other three um, color arrangements. So you should end up with four of them. All right? That's part A. One PDF? Uh, I would very much like you to do that because ultimately the beginning of my demonstration was to show how to create multiple artboards. And uh, you didn't catch that um, because you came in late. And, and Bob, how are you? Hello? You want to unmute for a second and say hi? Hello. Hi. Oh, you're, okay, there you go. I didn't know whether you're hearing me or not. Yes, yeah, sir. I was hearing you. Um, it, it was really hard to get in here, sir. To, you, you have to go and, and put the Zoom US slash J in there and then your number because the live link does not work. Um, it should work. I checked it. I don't know. I'll have to take a look at it later, but 
Um, I, I couldn't get in. I, I If I didn't know anything about computers, I wouldn't have been able to get in here. Okay. All right. I'll have to check it. I, when I checked it before I... I mean, when I was setting it up, it went to the it went to the proper link. So I don't know what's going on. I'll have to see. I'll have to check it out later. What I'll do tomorrow is I'll go in and I'll I'll check out with um, Zoom to find out what's going on with this. Why I'm not able to get in. I actually I should say Canvas because did you try to go in through Canvas? Yes. Yeah, I was in Canvas. I went uh, you know to the classroom and yeah. the homepage and and tried to go in that way and the link was not there and. So uh, I found your PMID, and uh, and and then I, you know, the other class that I have in this mod, it, it gave me the the rest of the the address. So okay, I just put two and two together, and I did it. But, All right, um, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to check to see what's going on with that. I know I had the link in place. Uh, you should have been directed to the page. I don't know what happened. Um, but I know I put it in because I mean, I set it up yesterday. So, but I'll check and see what, what's going on with it. I'm sorry about that. Uh, oh, that's all right. It's, I can get it straight. All right. I'm gonna, I, I wondered when nobody showed up, I wondered what was going on. I wondered why there was a problem. I, I wrote you an email about an hour ago. Right. Or a half an hour ago, trying to let you know that I couldn't, you know, I couldn't open the link. So, all right. Well, let me. I'll check it out. I'll check it out tomorrow and get it straightened out. Uh, the bottom line is this has all been recorded, so uh, you will be able to go in and you will be able to view the recording and see what I've been doing uh, with this. Um, I do appreciate it. Yeah. So you're going to be able. This is the first part of the assignment is to create the color wheel. There is your color wheel. That's what you're going to create, and then you're going to come in and you're going to show different color relationships. And here's the week one. The color relationships are primary colors, secondary colors, tertiary colors, complementary colors. And just so that you know, this here is more or less what a complementary color relationship would look like. And I demonstrated how I would create this to make this look this way. And right. I also demonstrated how to create um, – Jeffrey knows about this already, but there are different artboards in Adobe Illustrator, and I don't know, uh, you'll see at the beginning, I, I recommend that you use Adobe Illustrator to do these assignments. I don't know whether you know much about it or not, Bob. Do you know much about Illustrator? Uh, yes, sir. I've had a couple of classes and had to do, I've been in class for 10 months now. So. Good. Okay. The, it, I think it's really important for students to do the programs use the programs correctly and when you're doing certain jobs in this particular case, <coughs> the assignment says you can use any uh, Adobe Creative Suite program to get the color wheel but I got to be truthful with you that is not the proper thing to let students have that kind of freedom in this particular case this particular project really should be done in Illustrator and that's what I'm going to ask you to do just okay. I, I wanted, I, since this is color in production, part of my responsibility is to also show you from a production standpoint what the right thing to do is. So All I right. really pick on you a little bit for that because it is a production course. And if I don't do that, who's going to do it? You know what I mean? Right. right. Okay. So that's the first part. Oh, by the way, I, I want to let everybody know that I love having the mics open and I love to be able to have you talk to me. Uh, directly. So I'm going to ask that in order for me to do that, I need you to make sure that where you are is quiet and that there's no noise in the background. There's no barking dogs or kids or, or uh, television or radio. You've got to find a quiet place and go in and be there so that you can have the mic on because I can't, as it is, I got all kinds of background noises here. Like I just had my, my phone going off a minute ago and if my dogs start barking, you know what I mean? I, I can't control that because I got to speak, but I want to make it so that the class participants can all be uh, talking to me as I go along. And the only way that that can work is if we have quiet with everybody. So find yourself somewhere quiet to be, and make sure that you're quiet in a quiet space, and I will allow you to have your mics uh, open, and you can ask me questions anytime you want. 
okay? All right. All right. In the future, I will do that for you. Unfortunately, yeah. this evening, I'm not going to be able to because all six of my grandchildren are here. And no problem. Then here's what I want you to do. I want you to, if you have a question, you're going to hit the mic and you're going to speak to me. And the rest of the time, you're going to shut the mic off. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So that's good. All right. So, so that's the first part of our assignment. Now, what I want to do is I want to get into the second part of the, the assignment. Uh, I'm going to go to this art right here. And this art right here is the second part of the assignment. And I want you to take a look at this. I know that you guys came in a little bit late, but I want you to see what I have here first. Check this out. There is my hex symbol, or my, I, this is, shouldn't say um, hex symbol. This is my color wheel. This is my first color wheel. And my first color wheel essentially is RGB. So in this particular case, RGB are primary colors. So you see what I did? I did the same thing with this where I showed my primary colors and then I, I grayed out or I used transparency on my other colors. So you see how I go, go view fit all in window. You see how I've created a creative theme. Now here's an analogous color scheme. This is one. So you're going to be doing this one, which is um, uh, primary. Uh, you're going to be doing that in, in the first exercise. But and I'll explain why I used it here in a minute. The second one that you're going to be doing in here, or the first one you're going to be doing in here, is analogous. Now, analogous, just so that you know, analogous is where you have a primary color or a, uh, a, a, a central color, and analogous are the two colors that are on either side of the color that you choose. So in this particular case, I chose the red. An analogous color scheme would be made up of the red and each side the color that is on each side each other side of the um, of the primary color that you're using okay and then these are tertiary colors so what you would be doing is you'd be picking tertiary colors and then of course this is showing the complementary color all right and since there's three colors in my in my design uh, what I can do is show you a little bit about uh, hue saturation and brightness so that'll give me an opportunity to talk about that all right uh, so basically, what you're going to be doing, I didn't say hello to D3R3K, Derek, oh Derek, it's Derek, I know Derek, Bob, did I ever have you before? No. Were you in one of my classes, Bob? No, sir, I was not. Okay, Derek, you were, right? You there, Derek? Yes, sir, I was. How are you, Derek? I'm doing pretty good. I'm I'm glad to see some uh, friendly faces, some people I saw before. Let me ask you, tell me the truth now. Don't lie to me. Are you happy to be back in here with me, or, or are you saying to yourself, oh, no, not him again? I'm pretty happy because last time I wasn't fully participating because I had a lot of things going on, but now I'm glad I get to have a second chance. Okay, cool. Great. I'm glad to have both of you back. Jeffrey here, you, you had classes with Jeffrey before? Not that I remember. Okay, so maybe I had you. I, I remember you from one of the classes, though, Derek, the name. And Jeffrey, and then Bob's new. I've never had Bob before, I believe. Yeah. So, All right, so listen, uh, you, you all get the idea. I want to be able to leave you guys the ability to contact me directly without uh, typing in stuff. So I, I will allow you to have the mics open if you give me some quiet in the room. It's really, really critical that we have quiet rooms so I can open mics on people and give you the ability to speak up whenever you have a question, I can answer your question immediately, okay? So let's get back to this. What are we gonna be doing with this second part of our assignment here? Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create these different color relationships. Uh, the first one I have over here is primary color, analogous, complementary, or split complementary. And I'll explain to you split complementary, and I'll also show you HSB on this one. And then there's tertiary. Uh, so let me explain what I did. I live in New Jersey, and I live very close to Pennsylvania. And one of the things that I see all over the place when I go to Pennsylvania are Pennsylvania Dutch hex symbols. Now, this design that I reproduced here is a classic Pennsylvania Dutch hex symbol. And strangely enough, they tend to do these in black and white with primary colors. Okay? Red, yellow, and blue. Why? 
I have no idea. But I decided that, you know what, this would be for me a really good way to show my color relationships. So from a creative standpoint, that's what I decided to do, to show my color relationships by creating this hex sign and modifying them with color. I don't care what you guys do. You can come up with any kind of creative way of doing this that you want. But the bottom line is what you're trying to do is you're trying to show color relationships. So this one is done and complete. It's got its red, it's got its blue, it's got its yellow, and there it is, red, yellow, and blue. So this one works. I'm so, sorry, and you did want it in RGB? Um, yeah, yeah, I can make it an RGB. I, well, mine is all mine is in CMYK. So in this particular case, it can either be in CMYK or RGB. Frankly, I don't care either way. RGB would just be fine. Oh well, you mean the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue? Okay, you're talking about RGB, red, green, and blue, uh, or CMYK. That's a different thing. This is this is primary. Primary is red, yellow, and blue, not red, green, and blue. Yes, sir. I understand that. I just thought I heard you say that, you know, we should use RGB for red, yellow, and blue. No, well, I made a mistake. I just had a, a little bit of a, you know, a brain burp. No, um, we're going to be using um, primary colors, red, yellow, and blue for that. Okay. So that's the one that, and I think that red, yellow, and blue one is in your first exercise anyway. But I, what I did was I basically brought this in because my hex symbol starts out at, in using primary colors. So I just thought, you know, if I'm going to do this, I should show the primary colors so I can talk about why I did what I did and where it, where it all comes from. Okay. So, so far good. You guys think you're with me so far? So far so good. Yes, uh, sir. Okay, yeah, great. All right, so, so here's what I want to do. I'm going to go to the analogous. I'm going to click on that board. Now, I want you to see something. It's a subtle thing. Can you see that little black line there? Can any of you see that? There's a little black line around the edge of the artboard? Yes, sir. Watch when I click that one. Can you see that? That changes to black and that goes gray? Yeah, I can see that. Okay. So when you have multiple artboards on here, oh, and by the way, for those of you, and I think all of you haven't seen me do this, but I think some of you might know how to do this already. Uh, I want you to try to get all of your artboards into one document so that you can send it to me as one document. So you've got two different projects. In the end, you should have two PDFs coming to me and they should be basically, um, uh, four artboards. There is an artboard panel, and at the beginning of my instruction, I demonstrate exactly how to set up four artboards in one file. So don't get concerned that you, I'm saying this to you, and you're like, well, how do we do that? I showed you at the beginning of this exercise. So when you go back and look at this, you'll see exactly how to do that. Okay? Think you guys are cool with that? Yes. All right. We're so, good. Good. So what, what we're going to do right now, I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to uh, notice that I, I have a layers palette here. This is another thing I just wanted to point out to you. I have a layers palette. And on my layer, uh, I have this broken out on into separate layers. And I have my layers locked. Okay? Well, the reason that I have these layers locked is because I'm using the same color. And when I select one of the colors, if all these were unlocked, then all the reds everywhere, because they're the same red, would select. And if I affect one, I will affect all of them. And I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to build four different ones. So the only way to make sure that that happens is to make sure and watch when I do this. See, in the layers panel, you have a lock and you have an eyeball. The eyeball hides, it toggles, hide on and off. Watch, click off. Okay. And there's that one. There's that one, and there's that one, okay? So you kind of get the idea. What this is saying essentially is that this one is locked, this one is locked, this one is locked. So that's the one that I'm about to work on right there, tertiary, okay? So let me bring the original back because the original has all of my colors on it. So what I'm going to do is this one here is also locked. See, I can't select it. It's locked. But this one is not. See, I can select that. See it? See it highlighting? So what I'm going to do is 
uh, and this is kind of interesting. Let me, let me uh, go view, fit artboard and window. And now what I've done is I've, I've kind of zoomed in on the artboard that I'm about to work. Here is my tertiary color scheme. And as I say, when you read your assignment, you're going to, it'll talk about these different color schemes and you'll learn about them and then you're going to be able to employ them to do what we're doing here. But I want to show you kind of a cool trick. So I made this uh, primary color and I made sure that I duplicated onto four different panels because I'm going to change the colors on these using my, my, uh, my required colors to do this. So what I want to do is I want to quickly select all these objects. And since this is a course where I'm trying to show you something about the program, uh, I'm going to try to do some things that hopefully will show you some stuff that maybe you don't know. So I, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on that little square right there and that square of blue. And I'm going to go up to the select menu and I'm going to come down to same fill color. And notice that when I do that, all of my blue gets selected. So instead of me coming in here and holding down the shift key and selecting, 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 I can go select same fill color and all of my blue fill colors. I'll do it again because I just deselected it. Select same fill color. All of them select now. Okay, clear enough? No questions? Yes. Nope, so far so good. Good. Grab the eyedropper tool and come over here and click on the purple. And now I have changed the blue to the purple. And get my regular selection tool. You got to remember that every time you go to do something different, you got to always go back and grab your selection tool. This time, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on the yellow. Select, same. Fill color and all the yellow selects and I get my eyedropper tool and I come over here and I click on the orange and now I've got purple and orange. So what I'm doing essentially is I'm taking the colors out uh, that were the original colors and I'm replacing them with my uh, color relationships. So that's what I'm basically doing. I'm, I'm using a composition to display my color relationships. This one is select that, select same, fill color, get my eyedropper tool. Now, remember, you can tear this out, and you can bring this up here and make it closer. Click on that, and now I have my color relationships. Now, there's one thing that happened here, and that is it also put that gray in there. And I don't think I want the gray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the stuff in the middle here, and I'm going to deselect that black outline. I don't want that black outline involved in this. But I'm going to select all those objects in there. Because what I want to do is come over to the stroke. And you see how the stroke is forward? I'm going to click on the None button. And then deselect it. And there you go. Okay, let's go to the View menu. Fit All in Window. And now you can see that I have my, uh, my primary colors red yellow and blue and I have my tertiary colors done so this is now going to give you an idea of what I would like to see you submit to me again as I say do you have to use hex symbols no absolutely not come up with some kind of interesting composition in in a way that you can then show me these color relationships is that clear I, I know you guys can can figure this out right this is not a big problem right uh, we're good Great. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I worked on tertiary right there. So now I'm going to lock tertiary and I'm going to show split complement right there. And I'm going to unlock split complement. So the rest of these are locked. I can't touch any of them. I can't do anything with them. Okay. This is the only one that I can work on. See, I'm selecting it and I can work on it. Okay. So uh, I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you a complement, uh, sorry, a split complement. And I'm going to show you a complement with, watch when I click on this and go view, uh, where are we at here? I want to go fit artboard and window. Okay, complement, split complement. What I want to show you instead of complement is I'm going to show you split complement and then a complement with a hue, saturation, and brightness uh, involved in it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you 
the split complement. And I mentioned it to you guys before, and I will show you now what, what a split complement ultimately is. So I'm going to start off by clicking on the blue. And I'm going to come up to the select menu, same, fill color, and I've selected all the blue objects. And I think tonight I'm going to use the, the green, uh, let's see, maybe the red, hit the red. Okay, so I got that red. You know what? No, control Z. Go to, go to green because I got red up there. I'm going to have to get rid of the red. So now I got green. So what is a split complement? Uh, a split complement essentially is where you take a color and then what you do is you split the color on either side of the complement. So in other words, this is the color that I'm choosing. So a complement is red and green. So actually, I already have a complement going here. I got red and green going on. But I want a split complement. So I'm going to go with green. So that means I'm going to have to change this color right here. And I'm going to change that, select, same, fill color. And a split complement would be colors on either side of the complementary color. So I'm going to click on that color. And I get this color, but this color has been turned into a, a semi-transparent state. So who wants to tell me how I can fix that? Anybody remember? I don't remember that part. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the window menu, and I'm going to go to transparency, and I'm going to come down from my transparency, and I'm going to change the opacity from 50% to 100%. There you go. That's all there is to it. Okay? So now I have that color. So now I'm going to click on the yellow, select same fill color, right? And I'm going to go in back into my split complementary, which is there's your complement. Your split complement is the opposite color, the colors on either side. I'm going to get my eyedropper tool and I'm going to click on that color. It throws it in. I'm going to change the opacity of that color back up to 100%. And that, my friends, that is a split complement. Now, the only thing that I'm going to want to do here is I'm going to want to remove this stroke. And I'm going to make that stroke none. Oops. Oh, I forgot one very important thing. I keep that deselected. And then remove the stroke. And there you go. That is what's known as a split complement. Now, you're going to read about this, and you're going to create this on your own, but does that make sense to you? Do you have any questions about what a split complement is? Uh, is it clear how I explained it? Oh, it's clear. I just had a, um, a question. So even though it is um, the opacity on the wheel, um, when you still, when you click on it anyway, you can still change the opacity in the, um, um, uh, when you get to the opacity, um, uh, you want me? You're saying that I changed the opacity here, but I didn't change the opacity there. No, no, no. I was just, I was just making sure that you can actually still change it up there, even though it's, it's still the same. On the Here's what's going on. Let me just explain this to you. This is saying. Let me click on this again to show you. I just, I'm going to click one of these things. This is saying, okay. Here's my eyedropper tool. I want you to click this color, and I want you to give me this color. So when I do that, boom, it gives me the color. But that color, even though it is that orange color, I turned that orange into 50% of orange. So in effect, what it's doing is it's, it's telling me, well, that's what you want. You want that color, and that color is the way it is. So right now, that is showing 50%. But in order for me to just go up and change that, I, I drop it back to 100%, and I get 100%. This is not selected. So since it's not selected, it's not going to change. The color's not going to change. Only the object that's selected will change. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. That's perfect. All right. So I'm going to click on this guy because I have the stroke back on it again and remove the stroke. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you was if we were going to go with a, a straight complementary color scheme, all right, and I'm going to click on that and go select same fill color. And if I click on the red, boom, there's my complements. The red and the green are my complements, but I need a third color. So what I'm going to do is I got to, I, I don't want to use, I don't want to use a, uh, I don't want to involve a separate color. 
but there is a, a color arrangement that are that's known as hue saturation and brightness so what I really want to do is I want to talk to you a little bit about hue saturation and brightness so I'm going to select this color right there all right because the primary color I'm going for is the green and the red so I'm going to select that color select same fill color come on baby there we go and I'm going to go in and I'm going to choose oh I don't know let's say I'm going to choose red so now I have two sets of reds which I don't want however what I can do is I come over here and get my fill forward and I can double click and I can bring up my color picker now hue saturation and brightness what is hue saturation and brightness hue is another word for color Does, do any of you did any of you know that yeah I saw that in the video okay so when I talk about hue I'm talking about color if I'm talking about color I'm talking about hue now check this color picker out and I'll show you a little something about it see that bar right there that bar right there they're all hues they're all individual colors and I can change those colors by simply dragging that up and down okay I'm not going to do it because I want to keep that color. So I can change this to any of these hues by just dragging that little thing down. The other thing that I have is I have what's known as saturation and brightness. Now, saturation is different than opacity. It looks similar to opacity, but it's different. Uh, it's different in that what you're doing is you're not making it opaque. You're removing the color, creating, a, in effect, a pastel version of the color look what's happening to that little color chip there can you see the color chip can you see the bottom one stays bright red and the one on the top is getting sort of pink looking see it yes okay what I'm doing is I'm desaturating the color and as I desaturate the color it gets lighter and lighter and lighter until I ultimately get over to where it turns it white altogether that's called saturation I'm gonna resaturate it by dragging it over here now it is fully saturated okay now the third one is brightness all the way up here the color is at its most brightness and you can see that it's even a little bit brighter than the original color can you see that by looking at that You're my board. yes okay now I'm going to I'm gonna start darkening it so I'm gonna drag it down and drag it down until I get it into an area where it's dark so you can pretty much see that that's dark, right? Yes. Okay. So to go back to what I was saying before, we're going to talk about HSB, RGB. We're going to talk about hexadecimal, and we're going to talk about CMYK in the next couple of weeks. We're going to also talk about color swatches, and all this is going to be explained to you. But tonight, we're just going to be talking about some very simple, basic stuff. And one of the things is hue, and I'll drag this to show you the hue. See how it's changing the hue? See it? Yep. Okay, I'm going to bring it back up to kind of like red again. I can't get it back to exactly where it was, but close enough. And then hue, and then saturation and brightness. So saturation this way, brightness is that way. I'm going to hit OK. And now what I have basically is I have hue, I'm sorry, I have complementary, and then I've added a brightness to one of my primary colors. So that's another thing that you can do with color when you're working with color compositions. You can incorporate a brightness command or you can uh, incorporate a, a hue in it, okay? I have a question for you. How, how would you um, go the opposite way and incorporate dullness? Well, uh, brightness, uh, saturation is the closest you're gonna come to dullness, okay? Uh, I mean, if you go this direction, See what's happening is you're getting you're getting it to to this now. As far as dullness is concerned, uh, the only other dullness that you have maybe is gray. You can go up and down this slide and you can make it kind of gray. I'm not exactly sure what you're thinking in terms of dullness though. What? Well, you, I mean, it was one of the three that they talked about under saturation. You know, brightness and dullness as part okay, of the. So I think, yeah, I think what they're talking about is hue saturation. I think is what they mean by dullness. I think saturation is what they're what they're saying dullness is. Uh, that's the that's the best answer I can give you, because ultimately when you make something a little bit duller, what you're doing is 
uh, in my mind, actually, brightness is what makes it more duller. I don't know. It's a, 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 I'm, I'm not sure dull because that's not like a term that I'm used to working with. I'm usually, I usually am used to working with hue, saturation, and brightness. And well, my thinking was uh, changing the tint, you know, um, lowering the tint would make oh, it that's the, uh, that's, the, that's the equivalent of saturation. So maybe dullness is what they're referring to as saturation. By reducing the color to a tint, you're, you're creating a duller version of it, a, 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 a lighter version of it. That could be what they're talking about. Thank you. Okay. All right, so let's go back to the view menu and let's fit all in window again. And now we have, and you can see that these are, uh, they still are the same graphic, but can you see that they look totally different than one another? And you're looking at now color compositions, use of color in, in color relationships, and how you can get a composition to look pretty good, right? Even with these different colors. Wouldn't you say that, I mean, this is probably what I always see when I see these, but I think this kind of looks pretty good. Those colors look pretty good together, would you, would you think? Does anybody think they look awful together? Oh, they're kind of girly, but they're all right. Yeah, well, you know, again, they have their purpose. What about this color scheme? Does this color scheme bother anybody? No, it's fine. It's yeah. Good. It looks good. Yeah, so, I mean, using, using some basic knowledge, you can come up with uh, nice color compositions using more than one color. In this particular case, we're using at least three colors. And I just showed you a couple of different ways that you can go in and think about these colors to create these compositions. This is essentially what I'm looking for. So we now have that one done. All right, so I'm gonna lock it. And the only one that's left to do is the analogous. Okay, so now I've come in and I've unlocked the analogous. And we'll talk very quickly about the analogous. Let's go to the view menu, fit artboard and window. And we're going to go through the same process. We're going to come in here and we're going to select our little color chip and go to the select menu, same, fill color. And I'm going to get my little eyedropper tool, which let me bring it over here so I have it in front of me. Click on it and click on that color right there. And we now have our first set of analogous colors. And just let me remind you, if you haven't read this already, when you have an analogous color, you have a, a color that's the central color and an analogous color scheme, colors that are on either side of the color. That's an analogous color scheme. Correct? Did, did any of you read any of this yet? Have you had the chance to read any of this yet? Uh, it too was in the video, okay. so I understand. You understand. Did, did you find any of that difficult to, to comprehend? No, sir. I'm, no, not I'm good. Really, right? Okay, good. All right, so now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click on my next color. Select, same, fill color, and get my eyedropper tool. And I, I don't know, I guess I'll try the red one on this. Well, you know what? Control Z. Let's go back and click on the orange. And now we have our orange. Now the only problem that we have here is some of these colors have the gray around it and I wanna get rid of that. So I'm gonna select this whole thing, hold down the shift key. By holding the shift key down and you have a selection like this and you wanna delete something from the selection or, or remove something from the selection, hold the shift key down and click on it and what it'll do is it'll release that from your selection. Do you guys know that? I do now. Oh, you didn't know that before? Nope. Good. Well, so I, I, I am teaching you something new. Yep. It's, it's good. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to bring the stroke forward, and I want to hit none. So basically now what I've done is I've removed the stroke. Let's go to the view menu, fit all in window, and right there, more or less, let me close this. This right there is more or less what your assignment part two should be something along the lines of this, where you now have uh, your color relationships that are being displayed in some kind of a creative comp composition that you make. You're gonna create the composition. It's gonna be probably three colors in most cases. They, mine are all three colors. So you're gonna make them all in three colors and you're going to essentially uh, create this uh, 
composition using the analogous tertiary complementary or split complementary and then uh, the primary okay any questions about that because this is what you're going to do this is part two of your assignment this week good i, I just have one question because i missed the first part right. um the the will the color wills are we going to be creating those ourselves or are those already something that we have uh, you're going to create them okay as a matter of fact which one are you you're uh bob yeah yeah who jeff B jeff yes jeff you came in uh, Derek and Rod, uh, Bob came in a little bit later. You came in just after I finished showing how to make the color wheel. Or I think I, I think I made. Uh, did you see any part of me making the color wheel? Uh, I came in right when you were doing the uh, the arrows. Okay, so yeah, okay, I was right. You came in just as I finished making that color wheel. So if you if you go and watch the beginning of the video, you'll see exactly how I created my color wheel. Uh, Perfect. There are other ways that you can create a color wheel. I, I'm not saying that my way is the only way to do it, but it will be perfectly fine if you do it the way that I do it. Or if you come up with something a little more unique, fine. But just remember that in the end, it has to represent a color wheel. Whatever you do has to really represent a color wheel. I mean, don't go so creative with it that, you know, it doesn't look like a color wheel because then that that's I'm going to have to, you know, knock you on it. But we really are looking for a color wheel and then we are looking for you to explore some color relationships using the color wheel number one and then we want you to create a second document which is what we just went through here and we're going to create a, uh, a, a series of color relationships which is exactly what we did here and uh, I also wanted to point out to you at the very beginning of the uh, lesson tonight I also showed how to use the um, file new document I'll show you again real quick new document to create multiple artboards right here and put spacing in and arrange them and I explained this and then I showed you how to set this whole thing up okay so I'm not gonna go do this again but I did it at the beginning of the night and you will see that's the first thing that I talk about and I also talk about this swatch panel here and how I clear out all these colors, I'll quickly show you what I'm talking about. Select all unused, and you see how they all select? Can you see what, what happened to them? Who, who wants to tell me what happened to them when I went select all unused? They like highlighted them. They highlighted them. And then I come down here and I click delete swatch, and I delete them all, and then I'm left with the colors that I have in here that I've, I'm using and I haven't loaded all of them in, okay, but I did earlier so that you could see how I've loaded all my colors into this. And I'm doing this not because I'm nuts, but because from a graphic design standpoint, to be a really good graphic designer, designer, you need to start controlling your entire environment. You have to really control everything. And when you start creating artwork that's going to go to other designers or to a printer or for, for some other purposes, you don't want to have a bunch of color swatches in there that somebody could accidentally mess up your art. So and they, when you open up a new document, that swatch, the way you saw my swatch panel, they all look like, like that. And generally, the best idea is to remove all those color swatches, go in and create your own color swatches, and save them. So that's part of what I showed you to do at the beginning of my exercise for tonight. Okay? So you'll be able to see that when you go in and look at uh, what you missed uh, up front. Good? Perfect. All right. One last thing, and then you know what? I think we're going to wrap it up for tonight. Uh, basically, what we're going to do now is we're going to create an Adobe PDF that you're going to send to me. So here's the thing, just so that I give you a quick reminder on this. What I'm really looking for is I'm looking for you to create in Adobe Illustrator. I'm looking for you to create a four artboard document for this and for your color wheel. So you're gonna do color wheel and you're gonna show me the color wheel and it's going to have the color relationships that they ask for. Go back to this. See what it says here? Create a color wheel with 12 colors. Visually represent the following color relationships with lines and triangles, okay? Primary colors, secondary colors, tertiary colors, complementary colors. So your color wheel is gonna have three other versions. Primary, secondary, tertiary, I'm sorry, you're gonna have 
four versions of this, uh, plus the original color wheel. The color wheel is just going to be showing the 12 colors. You understand that, guys? It's going to look like this. See that? It's going to look something like that. That's your original color wheel. Then the other color wheels are going to end up looking something more like that. So do you get that? Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and what relationships you're looking for are the primary colors, the secondary, the tertiary, and the complementary. Uh, yeah, that's uh, – no, that's – I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's, that's for my color. That's for the second part. I'm sorry. First part is uh, right here. This is what you want. Uh, primary, secondary, tertiary. Oh, the same ones. Right? Yep. Yeah, same ones. Same ones in just the color wheel. So actually, actually – just so that you know, if you do the second one right, check it out. If you do the second one right, there is your color relationships. Or are they different? Wait a minute. Let me see here. All right. So primary, secondary, tertiary, complementary. Part two. Part two. And Ah, oh, sorry. No. Analogous, tertiary, and complementary. Okay. So you see what you got to do here? You got to do the three for part two, exactly like what I show you here. And then for part one you got to show me the regular color wheel, plus you got to show me one wheel showing primary, secondary, tertiary, and complementary. And what I did, just so that you know, here, I've shown you how I would go about showing one of them, complementary. So you would do something similar to this to show those other color relationships. So you end up with, like, five artboards on your first one and four artboards on your second. Uh, did, I, did I confuse you all? Not yet. I think it's pretty good. I could always go back and review the uh, right the, uh, beginning. Yeah, I have one one question. So total, you want on the first part, you want five artboards. On the second part, you want four. Yeah, I think so. Let me just look at the second one. The second one is color wheel. Second part, three, three, only three on the. Well, I actually have four, don't I? Yeah, I would try to go with something similar to mine. But if you did three, if you did three with one with just what they're asking for, analogous, uh, complementary, split, complementary, or tertiary. If you did three for the second one, I would have no trouble with that at all. Okay, does that help you? Yes, it does. Yeah. So the three, I'm re what I'm really looking for, really what I'm looking for, are these three right here for part two. And for part one, I'm looking for these guys right there. And remember, too, that you have a color wheel that you also have to show. So it says you create a color wheel with 12 colors, so you do want to show that. And then you want to represent the color relationships in separate wheels, primary, secondary, tertiary, complementary. So that's really what part one is. Okay? So you think you're good with it? And I mean, again, I, I think doing something similar to what I'm doing here, making your wheel and then using some transparency and then going into this, uh, I should show you this because this is better, using some transparency and then using some kind of a little device like this with some text, I think that would be perfectly good. Oh, and one more thing. When you show me complimentary, you don't have to show me every compliment. You, you only have to show me one. I mean, a lot of students go in and try to show every single compliment. And you don't need to do that. I'm not stupid. I know when you're showing me complimentary, if you're showing me one, I know you know what you're talking about. So you can show me one compliment. It's the same thing with all the others. You only have to show me one. So if you come in here and you have to show me the set of tertiary colors, you only have to show me one set of tertiary colors. You only have to show me uh, one pair or one group of, of, of secondary colors, okay? And then, of course, the primary colors, there really are only one set of primary colors, so you would show me only the one, okay? So does that make sense? Sounds good. All right, good, great. All right, I'm going to close that down, and let's go back to this because the last thing that I want to do right now for you and show you is the PDF. So this is what – this is project number two. This project is essentially done, and it's ready to send to me. You're not going to send me the Adobe Illustrator file. What you're going to send to me is an Adobe PDF file, okay? So I am going to go File, Save As, or Save a Copy. And I am going to get my Save a Copy dialog box. Um, I'm going to set my desktop as my location for my uh, 
three hex symbol copy. Uh, you, uh, here's what I probably would like you to, to um, uh, name this as. I'd like you to name your last name. So this is going to be Roger, uh, R-O-G-E-R-S, Rogers underscore A-S-S-I-G-N-M-E-N-T, and then maybe underscore P-T-2. So something like that, Bob? Derek? Yes, sir. Jeff? Something like that would be very good. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do, drop this down, and I'm going to choose Adobe PDF. Have you guys ever done this before? Uh, yeah, but yes. could I save it from the um, save menu? Okay. I, I, don't think, I don't think you can do it from the save menu. It's got to either be save as or save as a copy. And I use the save as a copy. Save menu would just simply save the Adobe Illustrator file. That's it. And I don't think you really can change it. Although I'll go in and look to make sure I'm right on that. So it's going to be Adobe PDF. And then I'm, and I put it on my desktop. See, I'm, a, I'm on a PC. So yours is going to look a little different. But I'm going to hit save. And then I get my Adobe PDF dialog box. Uh, there we go. Now, Illustrator default is just fine for this because this is just something that you are sending me for a presentation. We are going to be discussing this drop down and we're going to be discussing all this stuff later on in the mod. But for now, Illustrator default will be fine. Don't worry about any of this stuff. Uh, just so that you know, these are the default settings when saving an Illustrator file as an Adobe PDF. Use these settings when you plan on editing a file again in Illustrator. Okay, remember what I told you at the beginning of this. There are some text. I'm going to hit cancel here, and I'm going to come back in, and I'm going to go to my layers and unlock my layers, and I'm going to show you that. See that text right there? Uh, it's not clicking. Oh, I, oh object, unlock all. No, that's it. Okay, I just want to show you something. When I click on analogous, watch. So who can tell me what the, what's the state of that text? That's live text. All right. So now um, this is Jeffrey because I recognize your voice, right? Yep. Tell me what I got to do to it, Jeff, to send it to me. You've got to um, convert it to uh, – oh, you have to outline it. Oh, and then I do? It, then it becomes a, um, uh, an image or a um, – it's okay, not how do, I, how do I do that, Jeff? You go up to, um, let me see. We go up to type, I think. Yeah. No. No, nope, uh, you're right. You're right. Okay, and then go to create outlines. He's right. See that? Look. See what happens? So what's, what, what he just had me do essentially was he had me take that live text, and you can tell live text. Let me go to, the, let me go to another one. We'll do another one real quickly. So here's Pennsylvania Dutch hex sign. Live text looks like this. Live text has a, uh, a little anchor point and a line underneath the text, and that's live text. That means that I could go in and edit that text. I can change the font family, the font size. Look, I'll change the size, ch change it to 18. See, I made it bigger. Control-Z to bring it back. When I, when I want to turn this into a graphic shape, and the reason I'm doing this is because, and I mentioned this at the beginning of my exercise tonight, I may not have the same fonts on my computer that you have, and a PDF will display the fonts, but if I decide I want to open your art up into Adobe Illustrator to take a look at it, my Illustrator will have, a trouble, will have trouble opening the fonts because I won't have them on my computer, okay? And part of the thing that I'm going to want you to do is save this so that I can, if I want, go and open it up in Illustrator. Does that make sense to everybody? So you got to remember to go type, Create outlines to whatever text you have, all right? And I spelt Pennsylvania wrong now that I'm looking at this, but who cares? View fit all in fit uh, artboard and window. Okay, so now I basically have, see it? See what it looks like? That is that is now graphic shapes. I, I can display that text uh, perfectly fine because it is no longer text. So can you guys remember to do that when you send me this? Wherever you use text, make sure that you turn it into outlines when you send it to me. Okay? No yep. problem. Cool. All right, let's go back to file, save as. And I am going to 
Again, call this uh, Rogers, R-O-G-E-R-S underscore A-S-S-I-G-N-M-E-N-T underscore P-T-2. And I'm going to change this down to Adobe PDF. And it's going to go on my desktop and hit save. All right, so I read you this. Um, when you plan on editing a file, again, Adobe Illustrator, or when you need to place it in a layout application such as InDesign. Okay, so basically, Illustrator default is what you want to use if you're going to send it to me, and I might open it in Illustrator, which I might do. So the only thing that you have to worry about here is one thing right there. See that? Preserve Illustrator editing capabilities. You see it's got a check mark there? Everybody? Yep. Okay. You want to make sure yours has that check mark there. If it doesn't have a check mark and it looks like that, I will not be able to open it or edit it. So make sure that the check mark is there. Got it? Got it. That's the only other thing you have to worry about now. You're going to hit save PDF. And it is now writing the PDF. I'll close this down, and I will find this on my desktop. God knows where it is. Where did it go? Uh, Rogers Assignment Part 2. I'm going to try to launch this in. Um, I'm going to start off by looking at this in Acrobat Reader. Double click. And there it is. This is what I should be seeing when I click on my pages. I should see page one, page two, page three, page four. Nice and neat and easy. It is one file right there. See it? Not four, one. Right, everybody? Right. Oh, okay. so the artboards become pages in, uh, in preview? The artboards become pages, yes. So what artboards are, or what they... Yeah, what they are basically they're a, a way of creating multiple pages in a document. That's exactly what our, the concept of an artboard is: multiple pages in an Adobe Illustrator document. It's uh, it's slick. Now I want to show you one more thing, and then I'm going to uh, end this for tonight. If you have any questions or any more questions, I'm going to close these up. Just give me a second. Save it. No. And close that and save it. No. Okay. Now. Why am I going to the trouble of making this an editable PDF? I'll show you. File, open, and I'm going to go to my desktop, and I'm going to look for your file. Give me a second. I'm looking for uh, Roger's Assignment Part 2. Click open, and look at that. View, fit all in window, and look at that. I can click on that, and look at that. I can start editing this if I want. What do you think of that? That's a PDF, and I'm in Illustrator, and I can edit this thing. Cool, huh? That's nice. Okay, so that's the whole point. I, I might want to look at some of your projects. The other thing is, forget it. Even if I don't, I'm teaching you something. I'm teaching you about the program. I'm teaching you about how to work with this so that you look professional. That's what this is all about. Everything that I did here tonight was in a way to try to give you the ability to look more professional when you work with this particular program. We don't have time to go into every single program, but this is the most appropriate program to use for a project like this, and this gives me a great opportunity to really, you know, throw at you a bunch of stuff that I think will help you be very professional uh, working with the program as you go along. I am done. I am going to give you guys the last say on this. If you have any um, uh, things that you want to talk about uh, or ask me before we end it, do it now or forever hold your peace. I'm pretty good with everything. Uh, if I have any questions, I mean, tutoring is still available to us, correct? Yes, you will have a tutor. I haven't got the person yet. I will get it for you soon. Um, I will, um, I will uh, upload uh, to announcements and send emails to everybody as soon as I know who the tutor is. I don't know exactly who that is yet, but there's always me. Uh, you can contact me either by email or by phone if you need any questions, and I will help you. Uh, the other thing, too, is if you've missed any part of this tonight, go in and take a look at it uh, at the beginning 
of the uh, you know the class, uh, what, whatever you missed, okay? What I'm going to do now is, hold on a second, uh, I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to stop recording.